we have seen the structure of the layers in great detail how does it look like how it is arranged what are the functions there what are the structures sub layers and even the very high layers and their evolution and we have seen the ontology of the illusion but this uh, whole structure is not static as we saw that there are so many processes going on in this structure that form the structure that maintain the structure and these processes they give rise to different functions in the layers whatever a layer does we call it an activity a layer can have a single activity or many activities if a layer is not active it is not even perceived we don't call it a layer then the structures in the layer layers are always changing but not so much that they stop functioning completely actually they are trying to augment the function they are trying to preserve the layer through these very functions through the activity of the layer so you can say that the layer activity is movements of the semi permanent structures in various layers they generate some kind of activity that is called layer activity all the layers are always active they are always active sometimes the activity goes below our level of perception we cannot experience it but they are always active something or the other process is always happening some programs are always running there is no stagnation in the layers it is highly dynamic the whole system is highly dynamic however we do not experience all of this activity at once depending on the need depending on the function and situation one or the other layer becomes more active if it is present and the active layer then dominates the experience other layers are active but they do not come in the foreground what about the attention can't i shift my attention to something which is inactive yes you can but usually naturally and for an ignorant person the attention is pulled mechanically to the active layer because of an awareness and ignorance an ordinary person is incapable of controlling the attention the attention goes wherever the activity is it happens automatically the more aware a person is the more evolved an entity is the more control they have on the attention and they can also change the activity of the layer by simply by attending to another layer and this is why it is important to study not only the layers also their activity so a um, student of yoga or other such paths which involve controlling the activity or stopping the activity and so on of a particular layer they are highly interested in what activity is going on and what is the structure and these seekers these explorers have mapped the entire territory for us fortunately so for such seekers their goal becomes total control of the attention and using that attention to energize a particular layer or to attenuate it decrease its activity or to simply watch it study it know it so those who are interested can learn all those techniques to watch the layer activity and you will find that it is fascinating and it is vast that will be surprised at how big the structure is and how much activity there is compared to that in the outside world if you if you check the inorganic layers and all they are dead we call it life there is life in the layers there is something interesting about the activity if you observe it if you pay attention to it first thing i already mentioned that it never stops by never i mean never the, the activity is forever some people can say no the sleep stops it the death is going to stop it surely no the sleep attenuates the activity that is sure and the death simply shifts the activity to some other layer death is simply cessation of activity of the lower layers there is no death actually there is simply activity <laughs> some layers they because of their impermanence they are semi permanent some layers they degenerate quickly the more gross they are the faster they degenerate we already studied it in the past episodes and the others continue the whole of the structure is never destroyed actually 
since it is memory it sticks it is there forever even the experiences contributed by the lower layers they are still stored somewhere they don't go away the structures that that helped in acquisition of those experiences they can come and go but whatever they produced remains in the universal memory forever and when you say that there is no time that means it never happened in time it is all there potential for everything is there so activity never stops and another thing to notice about the activity is that the activity increases or decreases over time and this increase and decrease is not random although there is random component there but mostly it is very regular this is surprising the extenuation and attenuation is cyclic you will see all this if you pay attention to the activities of the layers a seeker on the path of knowledge does this a yogi is doing this he is not simply sitting there with the eyes closed a lot of knowledge can be gained and if you are interested a lot of control can be obtained so much control that it gives you almost infinite freedom it makes you limitless so this knowledge is very important and that is why humans are accumulating this knowledge since many thousand years so it is not only active it is going on in cycles it's very regular sometimes so you will find 24 hour activities of the layers that change every 24 hours you will find monthly activities you will find monthly cycles of these activities you will also find yearly and some things they change very regularly in decades and there ends our experience but we can extrapolate it and we can guess that there are bigger cycles corresponding to the higher layers the activity of the causal body can take hundreds of years to cycle through and uh, the group layers or the greater clusters they can take many thousand years millions of years sometimes to complete their cycles and ultimately there has to be a cycle of activity in the universal memory these are the cycles of creation and destruction if you if you like to call them but we see that it is simply change a cyclic change because it is based on vibrations the vibration is a is the basic building block of everything of all the illusion and therefore we see it everywhere in different forms there is a little bit of difference between a process and an activity the activity is seen the activity can be experienced a process not necessarily it's not possible to experience a process for example the process of self organization we see the self organization as an activity we do not really see the memories organizing itself we come to know that some organization has happened because we can infer it from the activity of that layer there are many processes that are going on we are not really aware of them but we can be aware of the activity of the layers and the activity is a kind of process so not all processes can be seen not all can be perceived whatever is perceived we call it the activity so here is an animation of the layers of the memory and i have taken a simplified model here only a few layers are shown and the changes here are not random really they are not arbitrary the thickness of the layers is actually showing how active it is so you can see in the daytime the lowest layers are most active in the night they are inactive and the higher layers are more active it goes through a 24 hour cycle and depends on the evolution of that person how this activity plays out for the less evolved the lower layers dominate for the more evolved the higher layers dominate and here is the animated graphic showing the movement of that attention you can call attention as an activity wherever there is attention we are aware of that experience and therefore we say that the awareness follows that attention and this uh, drawing shows that attention can shift on its own because of the pull of the layers this is natural but this can be controlled also and you can shift your attention to any layer any time 
This is the kind of control that a seeker is seeking. And not only that, we can change the range of the attention. We can narrow it down to a single activity or we can go on including more activities in it and broaden it. So that attention is two-dimensional here. It has a range and it has a position. We can broaden that attention at any position. Or we can narrow it at any position in any layer. Most of the people, they do not know it and therefore that tension is simply drifting. It is going on mechanically actually for most of the population, including all the animals. And that is why we say that on the path of knowledge, attention is the most important ability. You may want to control it completely and you will get enormous benefits. The activity of the layers can be controlled simply by attention and the use of awareness. It is possible to attend to any layer without awareness also, but then the necessary intelligence does not arise what to do with the layer. And it is also possible to misuse these abilities. But there is a built-in security mechanism there that an impure structure, a selfish, cruel, evil structure with such tendencies they usually have no awareness and no attention, no control over their attention. So they do not achieve much. Very rare to find somebody with a bad configuration and negativity in them to develop any kind of control over their attention and awareness. So that is why on many paths and also on the path of knowledge, we do prescribe purification which enables the control then. So what happens when, a, when an activity dominates? When the whole structure remains in the influence of that activity, it does not last, it is semi-stable. But as long as that activity or group of activities is going on, we call it a state. A state is an experience that is almost stable or semi-stable where one activity dominates or a group of layers is active. So obviously the activity shifts to different layers whether it is doing it cyclically, randomly or in whatever way. So the states change with layer activity. The structure, the whole memory structure, the layered structure remains in a state for a while and then changes. This can happen in cycles. And if uh, there is enough control over these uh, activities, we can change the state at will. We need not wait for the cycle to arrive. So, a seeker is trying to induce a certain kind of state. That is the goal of the yogic practices or any spiritual practice at all. We want certain kind of activities to dominate. We want certain other activities to be attenuated or totally destroyed sometimes. Because they are not wholesome. Because they are not helpful. Because they do not help in assist in evolution. So, we take charge of it. We take control of it. This knowledge enables this kind of control. If you don't know what it is, nothing can be done. Then the person or that human is like an automaton, like a robot, like a slave of the activities and the states. It is simply happening. Unfortunately, or pro probably not, it is natural that most of the humanity is like this. It is simply happening. So we can study the states. It is possible because they can be directly experienced. With the help of a little bit of logic and rationality, we can gain enormous amount of knowledge about this illusion. So as usual, we break down everything, we analyze everything at first. So the states, if you observe them, can be broken down into three major groups, sometimes called three states. They are the waking, dreaming and sleep. It is very, very familiar. Although, what is not familiar is what is going on in these states. What activities are going on in this state that hardly anybody knows. And, obviously, very few people know how to control them, how to induce them, how to stop them, how to start them. This is because there is a complete absence of knowledge about these states, what they are, these layers and their activities. There is hardly any knowledge in the society. So we can correct it and we can start studying the activity of the layers or the states. So waking state is not one state. There are cycles within cycles. So there are different kinds of waking states. If you pay attention, you will know all these things. 
This is not a theory. This is pure empirical observation. Anybody can verify it. Anybody can confirm it. Yes, there are some advanced states where only the more evolved seekers have reached. Those who have progressed, they know those states. Those who are not there, they don't know it. They will think that it is a theory. It is not a theory. It is all experience based. When we try to explain the states, we can take help of a theory. We can form hypothesis there. But we cannot fo form a theory about something which is not there. The observation comes first. So we observe the waking state and we see many kinds of states, sub-states in the waking. Depending on the nature of the activity, what kind of activity is going on there? So there can be many. Why do we want to study these activities, these states of the memory? There can be many reasons for that, practical and spiritual. The first that is very important for um, any seeker and even an ordinary worldly person, which is curing the suffering. Suffering is just negative activity of the lower layers, the addictions, the habits, too much ego, too much anger, greed, lust, etc. Even negative emotions like hate and intellectual shortcomings like stupidity. We want to get rid of this so that our life is free from suffering. And if these layers are not known, their states are not known and there is no way to shift the attention from one layer to another or to control the activity, then it is almost guaranteed that the quality of life of such person will be substandard. So this was understood many thousands years ago and a lot of techniques were developed to perform this surgical operations in the memory. It is possible to do that. It is possible to completely eliminate the suffering. It is even possible to control some of the most gross aspects of the life, such as the body. Pain can be controlled a li little bit. Degradation of the body can be controlled a little bit. Although theoretically there are no limits to what can be done once you achieve the control, but uh, practically we focus on the more acute problems here. Then a spiritual seeker may want to keep the activity of the layers restricted to the higher side, sometimes to the middle side. And so, every time the activity shifts to the lower side, using the power of intent and will, the attention is forced to the higher side. And it is not that the lower layers will stop functioning by this, but the unnecessary activity is stopped. The repetitive activities are stopped. For example, a layer is telling you to eat, but you just now had your breakfast. Now that activity is merely greed. It is not a need. That is not necessary. So you simply ignore that activity instead of converting it into an action, which can be harmful in the long term. And you shift your activity to something which is more useful and important than mindlessly eating all day. The more advanced seekers may want to give up the lower activities completely, the lower states completely. That is the classic cessation of births and deaths, also called the liberation. No more lower layers and so no headache of controlling their activities. And they may want to develop an ability to take on any form because as we saw in the previous episodes, the layers project a form to experience the universal memory around them. This form is called the body. It is absolutely possible to do that. Once you gain the control over the layer activities, you can shift your attention to the higher layers. The layers, by their nature, it is very natural for them to project form or a corresponding body, which will be in total control. There can be even more evolved seekers who may want to give up this play also, it becomes boring and completely dissolve, become a part of the greater mind or the universal mind. This is the dissolved state where they are not even interested in controlling any activities. It's complete freedom. There can be more applications of uh, knowing the layers and controlling the states such as uh, desire fulfillment about which we are going to have a separate series. It is a big subject. And of course, on the path of knowledge, we want the knowledge. Even if we don't want to control it, we love to know what it is. You can group this under the technology of the non-physical. 
we are already doing this uh, kind of control and manipulation at of the lowest layers there is a lot of mastery over the physical aspects and a little bit of mastery over the body the gross body etc but probably there is next to nothing about that so all the knowledge is scattered here and there in thousands of years old texts and is being controlled by secret societies and <laughs> gurus of various kinds it is possible to revive it it is not very difficult actually but it does take some time effort and practice you can go through a tra- traditional way of doing things or you can invent your own there is no limit here sky is the limit there is a limit to what can be done to the physical world or to the gross body because of the very tight rules there but as we go higher in the layers there are no limits your imagination is your limit then this is the superior kind of technology that a seeker is after so we are going to study these three main categories of uh, states in coming episodes stay tuned mm-hmm.